What's up everyone? Welcome to Sir Hunts Reviews. My name is Mark and in this video we're going to be discussing something that I have been waiting for like we knew that Duncan Egg was going to be one of the most likely Song of Ice and Fire prequels that we're going to be getting. This one is my favorite in all of the novellas and everything that George has written for this universe. It's the lone wolf and cub story. It's so many different things. It also leads kind of, it's like 90 years before the actual events of the main story, the main series, Game of Thrones. So it actually could potentially lead directly into a Robert's Rebellion spinoff. But all of that aside, please do me a massive favor. And before I jump into the content of this video, uh, slap a like on it. The like goal is going to be 42069. <laughs> and then also make sure you're subscribed and turn those notifications on. Uh, if you do those three things, that just really helps out my channel. And it's the best way to support my channel if you enjoy my content. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. All right. Now, this is a uh, article from Deadline.com. And they have mentioned Steve Conrad. He's known for Patriot. Patriot Perpetual Grace LTD um, has been tapped as writer and executive producer on the Duncan Egg prequel series to Game of Thrones, which has been in the works at HBO, sources said. Rep for the premium network had no comment. They go on to state that the Duncan Egg tales, yada yada, we're actually about to discuss that now. And they go on to mention that Conrad's feature writing credits include Wonder, Unfinished Business, The Pursuit of Happiness, The Weatherman, and in TV, he created Prime Video's Patriot and the upcoming AMC Plus animated neo-noir series Ultra City Smiths and co-created Epic's Perpetual Grace LTD. He also served as director on all three shows. Conrad is repped by CAA. So what does all that mean? What does that mean? What is this? This world of ice and fire is just getting bigger, right? So, <clears throat> personally, I've never heard of Steve Conrad. I've obviously heard of some of the projects he's been involved in. But one of the things that I thought was kind of interesting is that sometimes he potentially tends to uh, cast his brother. Because, obviously, that's my very next thought. Is like, oh, we've got a, basically a showrunner, right? We need casting. That's, like, the next thing. Because that's honestly what's going to make or break this show. you got to realize that. These two characters, right, Sir Duncan the Tall and Aegon, they, I guess it would be really easy to find an egg, but not so much Dunk. Dunk the Lunk is tall, he's fucking lean, he's, he, at the start of the story, he's young, so it's going to be really hard to find an actor that will be able to play that role. But looking down that path, I'm thinking like, you know, Kondo had a hand in casting some of the uh, actors for his show. So obviously this guy, Steve, is probably going to have a hand in casting some of the actors for his show. And when you look at some of his projects, his brother is in some of his projects. Now, this dude's American, so obviously his brother is American. And HBO, aside from Peter Dinklage, doesn't necessarily cast American actors to you know, uh, do British accents basically because it's really hard for them. But I, I feel like, you know, it's a possibility. I, I guess what I'm getting at is here is... I haven't even really looked to see who would be potentially cast in this role. So I guess what I want you all to do is let me know down below in the comments, who would you cast as Sir Dunk the Tall? Like, you got to realize that this person is going to be the series lead alongside Egg. And because this is a lone wolf and cub story, because this is the greatest, one of the greatest, I don't know, the greatest stories in the Song of Ice and Fire universe, you have to realize that these two castings are going to carry this series whereas with game of thrones and house of the dragon the cast is massive right duncan egg literally focuses on sir dunk the tall and Aegon. so it has to those two have to be like the chemistry has to be there and they also have to be strong leads because literally the cast changes um depending on how they do it and how many more books we get coming out supposedly there's supposed to be upwards of three more uh, books that are going to be added to the Hedge Knight series, uh, Knight of the Seven Kingdoms, right? So, depending on where that is, and obviously, I think George has been working on those. He probably has been working along those with Winds of Winter. He likes to write multiple things at once. That's how his brain works. He's probably finished several projects, whatever, 
right? So depending on how much source material we have is really going to determine how often the cast gets switched up. Because just for an example, and I guess I should really, really, really tread carefully here because at this point, you know, we're like uh, the five minute into the video. So there are several people that, people that are still watching, um, you know, whatever. I don't even know what the fuck my point was. But getting back on track here, um, this the way that this is most likely going to work out, uh, at least how I can see it right now in my head, is that the first season will be book one. Uh, maybe that would spill over into halfway through to season two, then obviously season two, book two, and then eventually book three. I think the series would culminate at the tragedy of Summer Hall. I know that's like a big leap and jump between times, but if we get five seasons, it's possible to do a small time jump and age them up because that's honestly the 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 meat of this. Like I could, I've done, as a matter of fact, I've actually done two videos this year alone on the Dunkin' Egg series. Um, check the link down below in the description or go on YouTube and type in Sir Hunt's uh, Hedge Knight or Sir Hunt's Dunkin' Egg, and those videos will likely be the first ones that pop up. But Basically, there's two things that I want to see the most. There's there's more than two things, but two things that I think are just one of them's amazing to see on screen, and the second one is just filled with mystery, right? So that the second one is obviously the tragedy at Summer Hall. That's the end of this story. That's what ultimately brings on the death of Sir Dunk the Tall, the death of Aegon. And in the way that Targaryen prophecy works. Egg was getting visions of Daenerys walking out of the funeral pile of Khal Drogo with her dragons. Egg didn't know that that wasn't him. He only saw vision uh, flashes of it. So he thought that he would have to sacrifice his niece or his daughter that was pregnant with Targaryen blood to sacrifice them in order to bring back dragons. He saw himself walking into the flames and walking out with dragons. He literally saw Daenerys's dragons being born and he thought that that's what he had to do duncan egg <clears throat> their relationship and their friendship is going to be told on screen and it's going to be fucking amazing and then that that uh you know I, I guess i said spoilers at some point that moment at the tragedy at summer hall when we find out what was really happening there and egg had been corrupted right and he's like willing to sacrifice his blood and his family to bring back dragons because he thought he saw it in a vision not realizing that that wouldn't happen till nearly 120 years later with Daenerys like what it's so crazy right so that is most likely what happened there you could argue that the maesters played a hand in it you could argue that the faceless men played a hand in it but ultimately that is what brought the downfall of like the the it wiped out a large chunk of Targaryens. And if that hadn't have happened, like obviously the dragons had already been gone uh, before that point, but if that hadn't happened, there would have been possibilities for a Targaryen restoration more so than what we're left with in this story. Right. So um, the other thing that I wanted to see on screen is obviously the tragedy of Summer Hall, but the other thing that I want to see adapted is a, a trial by seven. This is a seven by seven combat it's fucking amazing i'm all over the place in this video but basically uh in the first duncan egg series right in the hedge night the whole story starts out with dunk um someone who he's been a squire to sir arlen of penny tree has died throughout the night so the story picks up with dunk burying him dunk takes his belongings his possessions his horses sells some of them finds out there's an attorney at ashford obviously i'm skipping over a bunch of shit finds out there's an attorney at ashford and when he gets there um there's a stable boy who at least he thinks is the stable boy. It's obviously actually Egg, and he's like, yo, uh, take care of my horses. I'll give you a copper, yada, yada. And then obviously this little boy who is a Targaryen prince, Dunk doesn't know this yet, um, is a real smart ass. And he's like, yeah, I know how to do that. But what if I don't want to, right? So Dunk's like, look, I'll clock you. I'll, I'll, I'll. Harlan was that at least in Dunk's mind, Dunk felt like he should have been hit way more times than what he actually was. But he knows that, you know, for the most part, He's a good dude. So I think that transfers over into his relationship with Egg. It's like he warns him several times. He doesn't actually, you know, hurt him. He does, but it's like it's it's different. The relationship is reflected from, from Duncan Sir Arlen into Duncan Egg, right? So once uh the 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 attorney really starts to kick off, Dunk is trying to figure out how to get his armor. Um, he doesn't have any money, he's gotta like have a certain amount of money to participate in this tourney. So he ends up trying to um 
he ends up seeing someone that he recognized from when he was uh, being a hedge knight or being a squire to the hedge knights or Arlen of Penny Tree. And he's like, look, you remember me. You can vouch for me. Let me participate in this tourney. Um, and then in the process of that, uh, he's like walking the town a bit and he runs into a puppeteer woman, Tansel Too Tall, and she's depicting something that is a fucking no, 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 no. Don't do it, baby. Don't do it. Oh, no, don't do it. Uh, is the death of a dragon, right? So in her puppeteer show, she shows the downfall of a dragon. That is a grave sin. And, and, and around the corner is this little dickhead named Arian Brightflame. Um, he obviously like calls her out. It's like, look, bitch, what the fuck are you doing, right? Starts throwing the shit on the ground. Dunk comes over and he's like, hey, man, back the fuck up. Knocks the dude out. And then obviously Dunk is sentenced to death. But then there's some uh, manipulations happening because obviously Targaryen princes are either assholes or they're good, okay people, right? There's just kind of very few that are in between, right? So obviously Arian Brightflame is a dickhead. So what ends up happening is that trial by seven. Instead of Dunk being executed or whatever, there's a trial by seven. And in that, uh, Dunk, in Dunk ends up beating the shit out of Arian Brightflame. Although at the beginning... Um, Dunk tried to tilt his lance to get the up, uh, to get the upper hand on Arian, but Arian unhorsed him. So Dunk ended up having to drag him down off of his horse, and he Dunk used his size uh, as the advantage of that fight. Basically, beat the shit out of this dude, dragged him over to the side, and say, "Yo, recant your statement." It is the most badass thing ever. He like has to keep punching him. It's so fucking amazing. It's going to be insane to see on screen, right? So. Uh, obviously this video wasn't going to be too, too terribly long. If you want me to go, uh, more in depth, um, then I actually just did go, like I said, go to YouTube, type in Sir Hunt's Duncan Egg in those videos that I did where I talked about, uh, Hedge Knight and, and what happens in that series, uh, in depth, those videos are available. Um, the next thing that I wanted to talk about, like we talked about who Steve Conrad is. He's a writer. He's worked on several different projects. Sometimes he casts his brother. Um, the, the, speaking of casting, the casting, in my opinion, has to be really, really good for Duncan Egg. That is, that's honestly got to be stronger than the scripts at first because the scripts are literally already written, right? So you have to just sort of adapt it from the source material. The casting has to be insanely strong because yes, this will have a large, diverse cast of people, but this story is more so about Duncan Egg and their journey across Westeros, right? So we get to see the Seven Kingdoms. We get to see part of Westeros that we never really seen in the main series, or if we did, it was at a different time period, right? So that's really important, is to make sure you get strong lead actors for this series. Um, my two favorite things that I'm looking forward to seeing on screen are the tragedy at Summer Hall and then obviously the trial by seven that happens in the first book that's going to be fucking amazing. Um, as far as release date and like how many seasons it'll run for, to be completely honest, I think this is about two years down the line unless we know that it gets greenlit, like unless that comes out after House of the Dragon, which usually is how it works, right? So House of the Dragon will obviously be a, mashed, uh, a massive success. So then after that, to keep the hype kind of going, building the hype for season two of House of the Dragon, they're also probably going to, that's when they'll announce, uh, in my opinion, the next iteration of a prequel series from the, in the Game of Thrones universe. That would make the most sense. So maybe that's like six months down the line. Um, six months to eight months, and then eventually the casting. Once the casting starts coming out, that's when we'll know, hey, they're in full swing. The show should be on the air within a year. Um, and uh, you know, don't forget to check out the previous videos that I've done on Dunkin' Egg before. Uh, but as far as how long this series runs, I think five seasons is perfect. I obviously know there's gonna be more books, uh, the Wolves of Winterfell, right? There's gonna be more Dunkin' Egg books, but I feel like it, it TV shows something like this. It's set in a Song of Ice and Fire universe. It's set a little bit before Game of Thrones, right? Then we'll have the other show that's set a long time before Game of Thrones. Then we'll eventually have Robert's Rebellion. So we're going to have a full flushed out timeline, right? So it just makes sense. Um, five seasons. I don't know. You all let me know what you think down below in the comment section. Uh, I want to thank you all so, so much for watching. My name's Mark. And please, please, please slap a like on this video. This has been Sir Hunt's. I don't know. Oh, you know what? I forgot. Zaldrizas Puzdari. Ixos Daor.